I have a late 2013 MacBook Pro that is technically unsupported for upgrading to Sonoma, but that doesn't stop me. I'm going to quickly upgrade this old friend to Sonoma and take you along for the ride. We actually need to create our own installer. So I'm going to grab a USB drive that is at least 15 gigabytes, and I'm just going to plug that into the side for now. And then I'm going to open up, um, I'm going to open up Google Chrome, but you could use Safari, whatever browser you want. And then we're just going to go and do a Google search and we're going to search for Open Core Legacy Patcher. And this is the right website, but I will put a link in the description. So from here, we're just going to click on Getting Started. And there's a few things that you can look at on this website if you'd like. If you want to see if your system is supported, you can click on this Mac OS Sonoma support link, and it will talk about the versioning and kind of go through everything. But you should be safe if your computer is a 2008 Mac computer or later. But definitely, if you're worried, take a look here. But once we're ready, we're actually going to go over here to the download and build Mac OS installers. And again, there's a whole bunch of information here that you can read about how to do this, but I'm showing you how to do it. So we're just going to click on Open Core Legacy Patcher Release Apps. And we're going to install the latest version. You can see right now it's 1.0.1, .1, but you can install whichever one is the latest for you. So we're going to scroll down, and if we go all the way to the bottom, you'll notice that we have a group of assets. And this is where we're going to find the package that we want to install. So what, the one that we want to grab is the Open Core Patcher GUI. So we're just going to click on that. And we'll go ahead and we will just save it to our desktop. Now we're going to double click to unzip it. And now we'll double click to run the app. We want to open it. It's going to verify for security. We might have to go into our settings and allow this app to open, you know how you have to do on Mac a lot. Now we want to do a couple of different things here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Mac OS installer. So let's click on create Mac OS installer. And we're going to download a new one. So we'll click on download. Now obviously we want Sonoma. So here it is right here. So let's go ahead and click on download. Now this might take a little bit of time. So I'll go ahead and fast forward. Now you can see it's just validating the installer. That will also take a little bit of time. The download took about four minutes. Okay, we need to go ahead and enter our administrator password. Now it's extracting the installer. So now it's asking us if we want to create a Mac OS installer, and yes, we do. We're going to select the installer. It's the one we just downloaded. It needs to have access. We'll give it access. We need to select our disk. This is my USB drive, the SanDisk Ultra. We want to select our USB drive. So if you have multiple drives plugged in, just make sure you're selecting your USB and not like your Time Machine backup. It wants to confirm, letting us know that all data will be lost. So definitely confirm. Now it's creating the installer administrator password again. And this will take a few minutes. We'll be back and I'll let you know how long it took. Okay, so it finished, and in the beginning it actually looked like it wasn't even progressing, so just be patient. It took about 15 minutes. Now we get a pop-up saying that it successfully created the installer and asking if we want to install Open Core to this disk, and yes, we do. So we're going to click Yes, and it's going to go ahead and it's going to install it to our disk. We can go ahead and hit Install again. Now it's going to install Open Core. This is what allows us to actually install an unsupported version of Mac OS. So in this step, you actually want to be careful. We want to install the open core to our USB flash drive that we just installed Sonoma to, the Sonoma installer. So we click on that and then we can verify and it will go ahead and install open core. We have to enter our password. Okay, so it has finished installing open core and it's asking us to reboot and we do want to do that. But before I do that, I want to show you one thing. When I reboot, I'm going to hold the option key. So that is this key right here. Um, once it restarts, I'm going to click and I'm going to hold that key. So I'm just going to hit reboot. And this is the option key again. We're going to hit restart. And then once it actually shuts down, I'm just going to hold the option key until it comes back up with the bootable drives. Now I'm going to choose EFI boot. And then from here, I'm going to choose install Mac OS Sonoma. If we had chosen the initial install Sonoma option without choosing EFI boot, it would have given us an error and then restarted our computer. So we need to choose that EFI boot first. That's an important step. Okay, so you can see that we're presented with a few different options here on this screen. So now, if you want to install Sonoma and retain all of your files, you can choose that option that I have selected, install Mac OS Sonoma. Now you should still have a backup in case something goes wrong, but it should install Sonoma and you'll have all of your files left over. 
but I actually want to erase my computer so I get an absolutely fresh install of Sonoma. So I'm going to go into Disk Utility, and from here I'm just going to select my Macintosh hard drive, and I'm actually just going to go up here to Erase, and I can just call it the same thing. I want to keep it as APFS, that's the Apple file system, so I'll just click Erase. Now this might take a few minutes, we'll be back. Okay, so our file system has been erased, so I'm just going to click on Done. And now I'm just going to hit the X here to back out of Disk Utility. And now I'm going to click on Install Mac OS Sonoma. I should note, if you are going to upgrade without wiping your computer, you are going to need at least about, uh, I think, 30 to 40 gigabytes of space to install it initially. So I'm going to click Continue. I'm going to click Continue again. We need to agree to the software license agreement. Now we need to select where we want to install Mac OS. Now we want to select our actual disk. You can see I have, you know, 350 gigs available, but like I said, you need about 30 to 40 to actually install it. So now we'll click continue. And we've started the installation process. It says about 21 minutes remaining. I will be back when it's finished. Okay, so it looks like the computer is now restarting. That part was actually really fast. It only took about 10 minutes, maybe not even that. It does say 29 minutes now. In the Whoa, that one also surprised me. Looked like it was going to take a really long time, but it actually only took about 10 minutes, and it's now restarting again. So we'll see how long this takes. This actually seems like it's going fast, so let's see. All right, it restarted again, and uh, looks like I am now at the bootable drives. Oh, it is selecting it for me. We have another Apple logo. That only took a few minutes. That last load took about two to three minutes. I'm expecting this one to maybe be a quick just boot up, but we'll see. I now have a mouse in the top left corner. It's been about 30 seconds. We've got yet another restart. Uh, I'm not going to select a drive. I'm going to see if it wants to auto-select one for me, though. so there we go. And now it looks like I have uh, a progress bar. It says 1% completed. And we've got a very small Apple loading bar. I'm actually not used to seeing this loading bar. Maybe this is a Sonoma bar. So we're already at about 6 7%. So I'll be back when it finishes. OK, that particular restart took about two minutes with the progress bar. Let's go and see if it, yep, it's auto booting again. And I'm showing you all of this so that when you're doing this on your own, you don't get nervous when you see it continuously restarting and loading. It's going to do it multiple times. We're installing a whole new operating system and we're doing it in a bit of an unconventional way. So let's wait until it boots up again. Ooh, actually I'm back already because this one is moving fast and I think that we might get to some sort of setup screen. Bada bing, bada boom. That is a setup screen if I have ever seen one. Let's go ahead and let's get it set up. Just getting it connected to my Wi-Fi. We're going to set up a new computer account since I didn't erase before installing this. Woohoo, we're at a desktop and let's check it out. We're going to have to wait a few minutes. When you install an OS um, in this way, it takes a little bit of time and we're going to wait for a pop up to come up from the patcher that we used. So, we're just going to hang tight for a minute, but this is a great sign. We are in Sonoma on my 2013 MacBook Pro. We've now waited a minute here and we got a pop up saying that instead of having to use this USB drive every time, we can install Open Core right on the computer, which is exactly what we'd like to do. So, you'll notice that it kind of starts unpacking it and we can now select Install to Disk. And so we actually want to select our hard drive, so not the USB drive. And so on our main hard drive, we want to install it into the EFI, this disk zero. So we'll select that one. Go ahead and enter our password. Notice that we need to reboot to apply the settings. Let's go ahead and do it and see how fast it reboots. Restart. Okay, it didn't take too long, but uh, we weren't installing some things. So let's go ahead and log in. All right, we are in. So now let's click on the Apple menu here. Go to About This Mac. And how awesome is this? You can see that I am now running Sonoma 14.0. If I click on More Info, and this is actually popping up for us again because we still have our USB drive 
uh, connected to the computer. So if I hit cancel here and I just uh, take out this flash drive, then that won't pop up again for us. But again, you can see that uh, here I am on my MacBook Pro. You can tell by looking at the processor specs right there. And so there you have it. That's how you can upgrade an unsupported Mac to Mac OS Sonoma. If I had chosen to just do the upgrade and not actually erase my entire hard drive, all of my files and folders would still be available on my computer.